Hello and welcome to uh, Lamb of God and Merry Christmas. This is our uh, first Sunday in the season of Christmas. And so for Christians, uh, Christmas season lasts uh, into our 12 days as we lead up into January 6th, which is our epiphany, and we celebrate the light coming to the Gentiles. So as you will notice, our Advent wreath is out and it is fully lit uh, with the Christ candle or the Christmas candle in the middle. Uh, to symbolize that the light has come into the midst of our darkness. And so many, many thanks to all of those uh, who are able to make this possible. And I'd like to take the opportunity, just because of the amount of work they put into it, for thanking Janelle and Mike and Barb Larson and Jimmy Meissner and Rosalind Newton and Alex Johnson for their time uh, to help us uh, do all of these recordings in our Christmas season. Um, so uh, with that, let us uh, begin our worship and prepare our hearts and minds uh, to receive the word of the Lord. our beginning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him. The goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior has appeared. He has saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. 
as we gather together to behold the Christ child, let us turn our hearts to God, confessing our sins and seeking his forgiveness through Jesus Christ, so that we may rightly worship him. We confess. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we have wandered far off. off. We have not kept your word. word. We have fallen down and worshipped the idols of this world. As your light shines into this world through your Son, may it shine on our hearts so that we might repent and turn back to you. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. He has saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Because Christ Jesus has entered into the world, and rescued us from sin by his death and resurrection. You are called the holy people. You are the redeemed of the Lord. You have been sought out because our God has not forsaken us. Behold, your salvation has come. Behold, his reward is with him. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God. 
Testament reading appointed for the first Sunday of Christmas is from the book of Isaiah 61 and 62. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul, my soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her righteousness grows forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will give thanks to God with my whole heart. I will give thanks to God with my whole heart. For all your ways are wonderful. Epistle reading is from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks 
be to God. Hallelujah, boy, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A holy gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms, blessed God, and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal you to the Gentiles and the glory to your people Israel. His father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. In coming up at the very hour, she began to be give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, the family returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. love be God
This is he whom seers in old time chanted of with one accord, whom the voices of the prophets promised in their faithful word. Now he shines the long expected. Let creation praise its Lord evermore and evermore. O ye heights of heaven, adore him. Angel hosts his praises sing. Powers, dominions bow before him and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent. Every voice in concert I think uh, Christmas time uh, is an exercise in patience for all of us in some way. I, I remember as a kid, um, my parents were very good at making sure we always stayed in our room until the moment that they were ready for us, probably after they got their coffee and everything, now that I think about it, uh, for us to come running out of our room and, and go see the presents left under the tree, uh, and for us to kind of, you know, tear into them and, and for them to sit back and enjoy or, or to finally sleep. Um, and, and now as a parent, uh, kind of going through the same things, but even just as a normal adult, uh, the anxiousness for Christmas to kind of get here, a day to be a little bit different than all the other days, I think is the biggest thing that most of us in 2020 are looking for. Uh, but a day that, uh, that if anything, you at least have a treat or two or get to eat something different. And so we have to wait for it. And, or we have to wait for the time in which if you are kind of the more grumpy among us or the Grinch or the Scrooge in your group of friends or family, you're just waiting for the day when the Christmas music stops. By the way, patience is part of your wait. And it is something that, that we are used to in dealing with Christmas. And if anything, you have to then wait for Christmas to come around uh, for the next year, and that's always difficult as well. But as we, we do this patience and this waiting, and as we come out of Advent having had our, our season of waiting and patience and, and recognizing that much of our life is dealing with that, we have to ask the question of what is it like to have been in Israel and to be one of the persons who is waiting for their Messiah to come. Typically, in this week or the next week, but in every year that goes through, the appointed readings eventually mention Simeon and Anna. It's the only times they, they pop up in our scriptures. But certainly there are ones that, that we can remember quite well. Simeon's song, or the Nunc Dementis, is sung whenever the, uh, the communion happens as one of the alternatives at the end of the service. And in every funeral rite that we have, we speak these same words that Simeon spoke as he saw his Christ. 
And Anna, a woman that was so devout in her faith that there were very few in all of Israel that could ever hold a candle up to her, that having spent what would probably be at least over 70 years waiting for her Christ to come. And so she spent them fasting and praying in the temple. And that day, the day when she has finally seen her Messiah, she goes and she tells everybody who is waiting. Simeon says that now he can die, and Anna runs to tell others. These are two phenomenal people. But if we look back in Scripture at waiting, patience. We see many times in which Israel itself is calling out for the Lord to raise himself off of his throne and to intervene and to do something. So we're used to around um, Easter time hearing the stories of Israel in their slavery. And we hear of them trudging and, and, and making their bricks and they're in the muck and they're in the mire and they're, they're in the mud and and as they're doing so, they're just crying out for the Lord to come, to rescue them. Has he forgotten them? Every time Israel has turned their hearts away from God, and another nation comes in, and, and disaster seems to roll over them one more time, they pray and they cry out, wondering where their God is. And as they are finally taken off into their exile, it's then... But they're not so much just crying out of their own despair, but crying suddenly out of the depth of remembering the graciousness of their God. That they want Him back. They call for Him to come. Today, I, every time I turn on the news or watch a clip on, on YouTube or something like that, I hear eventually somebody crying out for the same thing this year. For the Lord to come, to give answers, to respond, to do something. We find ourselves, even though we are out of our Advent, in a time of waiting still for something. Something that assures us, something that brings us comfort, something that reminds us who we actually are and what it is that we are to be. As Israel's weight intensified over the generations and over the millennia, so has ours. Remembering the weight of the church that came before us. In Christmas time, we cannot help but think of the generations before us that we used to celebrate with whose homes we would go to and eat our dinners. And 2020, uh, it's, only, it's only intensified as we can't even do it with the people that are with us. <laughs> so we understand that weight and that cry and that pain. But I beg of you to remember the feeling of that Christmas day as it opens. Not just opening your presence, but the day itself. That when the nighttime is finally over and we're done with our Christmas Eve stuff and, and the next day when the dawn appears and we can actually get out of bed and we experience that different day, that is Christmas when we also get up and we remember what it fully means. For Simeon and Anna, it meant for them sweet relief. It meant for them that their Messiah has come. Simeon speaks the word that is not only the glory of God that has come, but a light to all of those who need a light. To those who've been lost in their darkness, like his own people and like our own people. For Anna, it was the fulfillment of her time. She had been waiting for so long. She had grown in her age. Parts of her body had probably stopped working by that time. And it was all worth it. 
the time that she had spent with her God and the time she had spent in the temple. And on Christmas morning, we find that our time has been fulfilled. For it is not that we were just waiting for a baby. It was not just that we were waiting for someone to show up. We were waiting for the gates of heaven to be opened. We were waiting for the light to pierce the darkness. And we were waiting to be called children. Children of God. Christmas is the day our adoption began. A day where, in reality and in truth, We were found in our muck and our mire and our mud. Children that were not perfect, but with blemish. Children known for our impatience and our waywardness. We were found as children that no other God would want to adopt. But not only does ours want us, he came to us to be with us, to be in our life, to walk in our land and our time, to place his hand on the cold and icy hands of the dead, to dare to touch people with diseases that nobody else would touch, to spend time with little ones thought of as nothing in their world, to be with us. Christmas is opening that gift of God being revealed to his world and to his children and to his people. So in this day of our Christmas season where we are used to opening up our gifts and we find this revelation and this adoption, it brings the presence and hope of God into our lives. That a wait doesn't need to continue in despair and in loneliness, but rather we are filled with His Holy Spirit, as it says in Galatians. And at Christmas we find that our God is the God of here and now. I once remember hearing a criticism of our faith from a man who was struggling in it. He said, well, is is it always only about the future? Is it about getting into heaven? Because that seems wasteful. Is it about some hope of something different that at some point might actually happen? Christmas Day speaks against that idea. Because it's not just about the future, but it's about our God coming into our present life here and now. An adoption is not something for just the future, but it's for here and it's for now. The presence of God is not something just for the future, it's for the here and for the now. And so we learn that just as our God has come into our present life, that this is a weight that we do not do on our own. And this is a world that we face, not on our own. And even in our isolation of 2020, it is not something we do on our own. But in each and every part of our lives, the radical invasion of our God has occurred with His presence. Standing near us and by us, even in the midst of our temptation and in the midst of our sinning, in the midst of our doubting and our despair, and even in the darkness of our December. The Lord is not just the Lord of the future, but of the here and the now. That as you are brought into that adoption, He gives you Himself, He gives you His Spirit, He gives you all that there is to have, just so that you could be His. 
And so as our God is a God for the here and the now, the faith that we have that comes from him and is attached to him is a faith for the here and the now. Speaking into our time leading us not into our seclusion and away from the rest of the world, but out into it as our God's presence goes out into it. Not shrieking back from the problems and difficulties of our relationships and our world, of our society and even of its politics, but out into it. Because our God is a God of here now, a God who is with us in our wait as we're waiting to run to the Christmas tree, a God who is with Israel from its beginning, a God who came to you in your baptism and is with you in your death, our God for you, no matter how old you are, no matter how old you grow. No matter how far you go or whether you stay, God always remains for you a God of the here and the now. For you in your life, it is always the fullness of time. A time of grace and a time of God's presence. Amen. Amen. Let us confess this God of the here and the now and the God of our future and always, in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God, in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Eternal Lord God, in the fullness of time, you sent forth your Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us and give us the adoption as your children and heirs. Hear us, Father, as we call to you in his name. Give us grace to rejoice in Christ's blessed incarnation and to grant us a glad new year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, from whom come all good gifts of families for all and in your promises, give all parents diligence and delight in your work and grant your favor on all children that they may grow in strength and wisdom. Bless all widows and orphans and broken families also with your mercy, and give them joy and redemption that you have won for us in Christ. Be with all of those who are called in their singleness to continue to live lives of fullness in service to you, to church, and to home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O worthy judge, from from you proceeds the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Give wisdom to those who make and administer and judge our laws, that they may serve you faithfully in their tasks, according to your good pleasure, for the benefit of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, receive our prayers for those who suffer from from loneliness. Comfort them with the sure and certain knowledge that they will never be forsaken by you. Give them family and friends within the household of faith with whom they can find loving companionship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, help the sick and the suffering especially all of those who are in need during this time, that are suffering under the pains and tribulations of COVID-19. Put an end, O Lord, to this pandemic, and grant us your mercy by seeing your power extended over and putting an end to it. Be with all of the medical professionals and workers, all of the scientists who are working diligently to put an end to it as well, using the knowledge that you have supplied. Surround them with your love in Christ, and according to your gracious will, heal all of those in pain and in need. We pray the same, O Lord, for all of those who mourn, and that you fill their hearts with the certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of lasting peace, show your mercy to those who receive the supper in all days, that they would behold the salvation that is found in the very body and blood of Christ for them. And with St. Simeon, be well prepared to depart in peace according to your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your your hands, O Lord, we commend for all, all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.
Christ have none.